Our next logical question after finding out how this all works was, is it safe? Should we be eating genetically modified food? What do you think? What do you think the potential effects will be for humans? I think devastating after what you told me and what we already know. I don't think it's a good idea. Like you idea. said, obesity seems Cancers like this is on the rise, autism. I mean, the, the possibility of becoming ill from them is very, very possible. Well, it's making, you know, us obese, number one. Right. You know, other people use cane sugar in other mm -hmm. countries, and we're using corn syrup yeah. because we produce it here, and we're basically putting money in the pockets of people who are killing us. So. If there was salmon in a tomato, maybe I might get some better skin because <laughs> out of a tomato. Just or just of the salmon oil. In general, like they, they actually they actually have these seeds that produce the pesticide already in the plant to save money so they don't have to spray it on the plants. Mm. They actually have it like that a seed that produces it in itself. Wow. Which That's might intense. Be... Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. That's a little out of the box. <laughs> I'm like I've never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah. I know you could do that. I don't even think about it most of the time. You just buy it. And right. it. <laughs> you would hope that it would be generally Yeah, safe. you just yeah. assume that the government or FDA or whatever is just taking care of it. That. Right. Yeah. You hope. Dr. Ermakova of the National Association of Genetic Security in Russia wanted to see what the effect of eating genetically modified foods would be on rats and their offspring. The experiment had two parts. In part one, there was three groups with three rats in each group. Let's call them group A, group B, and group C. She fed each group of rats food two weeks before conception. In group A, she fed the rats no soy products. In group B, she fed them soy flour. And in group C, she fed them genetically engineered soy flour. Then came part two of the experiment. This time, there were just two groups of three rats. Let's call them group D and group E. In group D, she fed the rats food with no soy products. In group E, she fed them genetically engineered soy flour. So in total, group A and group D ate no soy products, and those rats gave birth to 44 babies. Group B ate regular soy flour, and those rats gave birth to 33 babies. Group C and group E ate genetically engineered soy flour, and those rats gave birth to 45 babies. Well, that sounds normal. Well, three weeks later, the results were a little shocking. In the group with no soy at all, three baby rats died. In the groups with regular soy, three baby rats died. But in the groups who ate genetically engineered soy flour, 25 baby rats died. According to Dr. Ermakova, the reason why this is a problem is because the biochemical structure of rats is very similar to the biochemical structure of humans. The studies done on other animals resulted in precancerous cell growth, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, damaged immune systems, liver malfunctions, lesions in the liver, stomach, and kidneys, inflammation of certain organs, cell malfunctions, higher blood sugar levels, fertility problems, and unexplained increases in death rate.